It all began in Kirkwall, the fall of Knight Commander Meredith, the Kunari uprising, and of course, the Chantry's destruction and the onset of Mage Rebellion. One person always stood amidst the swirling chaos, Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. The Hawk family fled Lothering, refugees from the Blight. Leandra, mother of the champion and siblings Bethany and Carver, hoped to find refuge at her family's estate in Kirkwall, far to the north. As a mage with a family legacy of magic on both sides, Hawk naturally became involved in the events that ultimately led to the Mage Rebellion. The Hawks escaped the Blight with the help of Aveline Valen, a warrior and family friend. It's said that the family was also aided by Flemeth, the notorious Witch of the Wilds. Hawk's sister Bethany never reached the Free Marches. She was killed by Darkspawn while defending her family. The family's first years in Kirkwall were difficult. Leandra's brother Gamlin had lost the family fortune. The Hawks lived in poverty, forced to indenture themselves in return for entrance to the city. To pay off the debt, Hawk was forced to work for a band of mercenaries. All the while, Hawk and Carver did their best to hide Hawk's magic from the Templars. Opportunity eventually struck in the form of a dwarf named Bartran Tethrys who was planning an expedition to the Deep Roads. It was a long shot, but with gold gained from the expedition, Hawk could free the family from its criminal creditors and further Templar scrutiny. Hawk met a rogue Grey Warden named Anders, who possessed detailed maps of the Deep Roads. These maps were crucial to the expedition's success. Once Hawk obtained them, everything else fell quickly into place. Carver joined Hawk on the expedition. The siblings found ancient dwarven treasure and a statuette formed from a strange red lyrium. Carver fell victim to the blight that suffuses the deep roads, but Anders led him to a group of Grey Wardens who were able to save his life. The gold Hawk recovered from the deep roads brought back Leandra's stately childhood home in Hightown. The Hawks had barely settled into their new home when Leandra was murdered. A deeply sinister and twisted killing. Hawk hunted down Quentin, the blood mage responsible, but could not prevent Leandra's death. Leandra's tragic death was part of a critical problem facing Kirkwall. Rising tension between the city's mages, who felt increasingly oppressed, and Templars, who grew increasingly suspicious of their activities. Adding to the strain, a large contingent of Kunari had also established themselves in Kirkwall, much to the growing discomfort of the city's rulers. After their dreadnought was shipwrecked many years before, a group of stranded Kunari were allowed to remain in a cordoned off area in Lowtown. As time passed, the Kunari made no effort to return home and offered no explanation about why they remained. Tensions rose to a breaking point. Revered Mother Patrice convinced the Kunari were a threat to the Chantry's faith, incited violence between the Kunari and the Kirkwall populace. Hawk knew that Patrice would bring about unnecessary conflict. Though the champion tried to stop her, Patrice orchestrated the murder of Seamus Dumar, a Viscount's son and a recent convert to the Kune. When her crime was discovered, a Kunari assassin killed her. After Seamus was murdered, the Arashak of the Kunari group lost patience with the humans of Kirkwall. They would now submit to the Kuhn or die. The Kunari struck hard and fast. They took the palace in Hightown and beheaded the Viscount to immediately quash any resistance. Aided by Knight Commander Meredith and First Enchanter Orsino, Hawk reached the palace and stood toe to toe with the fearsome Kunari leader. Hawk fought the Kunari leader. The fierce battle resulted in the Arashok's death and the liberation of Kirkwall from its brief occupation. The Kunari quickly withdrew from the city entirely. Hawk saved Kirkwall and earned the grudging respect of the city's Templars, mages, and nobility, along with the title that history remembers, the Champion of Kirkwall. Kirkwall's problems were still not over, however. 
After Viscount Dumar's death, Knight Commander Meredith took power and blocked all attempts to appoint a new Viscount. Under Meredith's command, the Templars tightened their grip on the mages, planning to suppress what Meredith saw as a growing rebellion. Anders, who spent years fighting for justice and freedom for his fellow mages, saw that the time for negotiation was past. He destroyed Kirkwall's chantry, killing hundreds, including Grand Cleric Elthina. This single act began a rebellion that spread from circle to circle, until all circles of Magi had risen up in defiance against Chantry rule. There was no forgiveness for what Anders had done, and he asked for death at Hawk's hands. Hawk fulfilled the troubled mage's final request, and many others died along with Anders that day. Fighting spread swiftly through the city. Some mages rebelled openly, many of them succumbing to possession. Templars turned their swords on mages who rebelled and on those who did not. As First Enchanter Orsino refused to bend to the Templars, Knight Commander Meredith demanded that every mage in Kirkwall be put to the sword. Hawk saved many mages from Templar blades, keeping them from succumbing to possession or the temptations of blood magic. In the end, however, Hawk was forced to strike down Orsino who had betrayed his own values by resorting to blood magic himself. The battle proved one thing. Knight Commander Meredith had gone mad. Hawk saw the truth of it when Meredith unsheathed her sword and the red lyrium idol from the deep roads was embedded within it. The blade fueled her hatred and paranoia as it had for months. After a horrific battle, the red lyrium of the Knight Commander's sword consumed her as she died. Meredith became a statue, her face a frozen mask of horror. Little is known of the champion since that final battle. However, Hawk's story lives on in legend and song. Memories of the indelible changes the champion of Kirkwall brought to the face of Thetis.